What's up guys, Zach here with Dr. Eyeball MD. Today, I'm gonna go over with you how to use this, what it is, let's get into it. So what this is, is an indirect ophthalmoscope. You've probably seen it before. You see uh, ophthalmologists wearing it now. I'm assuming that if you're watching this channel, you are maybe new to ophthalmology. Maybe you're a medical student about to do an away rotation in ophthalmology. You're wondering how to use this. Maybe you're starting ophthalmology residency and wondering how to use it. So let's go into how to use this, the ins and outs of all the buttons, knobs, things, and how to help you get a view of the retina, a really good view and not a crappy one with that little direct ophthalmoscope that nobody knows how to use really well. Let's get into it. So I really shouldn't put down the direct ophthalmoscope, but this is a direct ophthalmoscope. This is uh, basically the equivalent of looking through a keyhole and trying to get a good view of an entire room. It's 15x magnification. Uh, you're often looking through an undilated pupil, uh, and it does have its uses. It's helpful for certain things, but it doesn't give you anywhere near the view of the retina that the indirect ophthalmoscope does. The downside to using the indirect ophthalmoscope is that you need special lenses to be able to use it, which I have here specifically. A large lens like this which is a 20 diopter lens and that just refers to how much it bends the light uh, coming into it but it's basically just a lens that's what it is I and mean, you need this to be able to view the retina with the indirect ophthalmoscope let's go over how to use it so you can actually get a good view of the retina so first things first you're gonna put it on your head and it's gonna have two knobs that you want to adjust to uh, adjust how it fits the top knob basically adjust the height of it so where it sits on your head it tightens up and it tightens down. So I want to adjust it so that it sits nicely and that the part that I'm looking through is gonna be kind of in line with my eyes. So that's what I'm adjusting with the height. This back knob basically adjusts the size. So if you have a little bitty head like me, you tighten it down to fit your head. So I get it nice and snug. It's not gonna fall off no matter which way I look. And that's the first thing is figuring basically how to get it to fit you right. Um, and so the next step is going to be to adjust the oculars here so I get a binocular view. What does a binocular view mean? It basically means that I'm seeing out of both eyes at the same time, because that's what I basically need if I'm gonna see in three dimensions, I need to be able to see out of both eyes. How do we do that? Put it on again. Um, and what I'm going to do is turn it on so that I can do this. And the way I turn it on, uh, it, this might differ on different ones, but you'll have a knob here that's going to adjust the brightness of it basically. So from all the way off to low light and then I can adjust it all the way up. So once I have it on, I turn it on here. I'm gonna hold my hands out in front of me. You can hold two thumbs like this uh, at arm's length and I'm going to try to get the light beam right in the center of my field of vision first. And the way I do that is with this little knob here. So I can adjust the beam up and down basically that little knob and I'm gonna get it right in the center and then I'm gonna shut one eye at a time looking at my thumbs with the little light beam so I shut my right eye and I make sure that the left eye is uh, I can see the entire little circle and I do that by adjusting this little eyepiece here it should slide in and out actually on this one it only slides here and so I slide it in and out so that the pupillary distance is appropriate for me. And so I'll shut one eye, make sure I can see it, shut the other eye, and move it so I can see out of that eye by itself. I'm making sure I can see out of each eye individually. That makes sure that each ocular is lined up with my eye. And then I'll get a binocular view. When I open, I should have a good three-dimensional view. Okay, so now we have it fitting our head. We have it on. We have the height of the beam where it should be with these little knobs. Uh, and then we've adjusted the oculars here um, to be the appropriate width. Now we are ready to try to look into the retina. Let's do it. For this part, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my 20 diopter lens. So I wanna be about an arm's length from the patient to take my pinky and actually rest it on the patient's face, basically next to the eye I'm gonna be looking at. What that does is it braces my hand uh, with their head, so if they move, my hand moves. And also it helps me keep a steady uh, working distance. So put my pinky on, on their face right here normally. So what I'm gonna do first with the indirect on, is without the without the lens not even in front we don't start with the lens in front uh, we get a red reflex so I'm looking at their eye and I'm going to shine the light directly at the pupil by this point the pupil should be dilated and I'm gonna shine the light on the pupil I'm gonna see the red reflex coming back kind of like a, uh, a camera when you get that red eye um, from the light from the flash reflecting that's the uh, red reflex so I see that first I've got my pinky braced on their face I've got the lens out to the side, so it's not in front of the eye, 
I move it out to the side, my pinky's braced on their face. I found the red reflex right here. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is bring my lens over in front of the pupil, okay? So first find the red reflex, then bring the lens in front of the pupil. And what you wanna do is you want to bring it closer than it needs to be, because the working, the working distance of this lens is gonna be about, somewhere about this distance probably for you to get a good view, but you wanna start with it in a lot closer to their face so that you get a real magnified view uh, of their entire eye. Basically you see their entire eye real magnified, and then you're gonna slowly pull back on it. So this is their face, I'm braced with my pinky, I find the red reflex, I bring the lens in closer than it needs to be, and then I slowly pull back, keeping their pupil in the center of my lens. This is a good way to start. When you get really you know, advanced and practice with this, you don't have to do this as much. But start in close and then pull back until the retina comes into focus. So when I'm this close, I'm seeing their entire eyeball. I slowly pull back, keeping their pupil in the center of my lens and when I get to about here, their retina is gonna be in focus. Now the tricky part to this is you've gotta keep the light, the lens, and their pupil all in line so that you can see. And that's what really requires the most uh, getting used to and the most practice, uh, is it's not easy to, to coordinate all those things, especially in the beginning. Um, but I think you can get it, probably within the course of a couple weeks, you can get pretty good at this. Uh, so it's just practice, really. But that's the best way to start. You know, Once you get this thing on, um, and you get it kind of all dialed in like I showed you. Uh, the key thing that a lot of med students and a lot of people starting out using this don't do is they don't look for the red reflex first and then they don't really come in close with their lens and then pull back. They just go right in with the lens and start looking and then you know they're, they're looking, the light beam is over on the side of the patient's face or not at the pupil. So start in close, keep it over the pupil, you see the entire eye magnified, pull back slowly, pull back slowly keeping the pupil in the center, and then the retina should come into focus. Uh, and another point to these lenses is um, you want this silver circle here to be facing the patient. So we see this side does not have it, this side does. If, you're, if your uh, lens doesn't have that, normally you want the letters on the side to be face, the downside to be facing the patient. So like that, facing the patient. So that's how you should hold it. Now a couple points to my hair's going crazy with this thing. A couple points to the uh, indirect and the buttons and things on it is you can adjust the size of the light beam. So I can adjust the size of that circle by this little knob here. You know it? If I want a little beam, uh, I can do that. Or something like a bigger beam. You get a really wide beam. And then I can have a little tiny beam. Um, I think starting off, you probably just want to go with the biggest. Uh, widest beam that you can so just set it to the widest beam over on the other side you have this little thing uh, and you can change the color so I can have a green green light like so um, and then I can also have a blue light now the reason you might want a blue light is if you put fluorescein dye into the eye um, you can actually just look to see if there's any staining defects so I would use that more almost like a little flashlight rather than turning on the blue light and looking at the retina. I'm not sure uh, how helpful that would be. Um, you could turn on the green light, however, and, uh, and look at the retina. And the reason for doing that would be that it's basically a red-free filter. And so it gives you a better look of the nerve fiber layer, and it also shows you hemorrhages better because they show up black um, with that red-free filter. But that's not one that I really use a lot mostly. It's just set to that widest beam, and then it's set to the white light. Uh, and then you can set the white light to be a diffuse light. If you do something like this, it's more diffuse. It's not that nice crisp, uh, it's not that nice crisp uh, round light. So you want the nice crisp one. You want a big, uh, a big circle and you want to put it as bright uh, as you need to be able to see, but not um, so bright that the patient can't tolerate it. it that just kind of depends on the patient. So that's kind of the ins and outs of how to use the indirect uh, ophthalmoscope. Um, it's going to require practice. It's going to be very tough to get if it's your first time, but just keep practicing with it. Uh, so quick recap, adjust the size for your head with this knob, adjust the up and down height here with this knob. You turn it on here with this little guy, as bright as possible if the patient will tolerate, especially when you're learning with it. Make your circle as big as possible. Do the white light with a nice crisp uh, edge to the circle. Make sure that your oculars are spaced appropriately and that the circle beam is uh, at the right height for you. This does the height again. 
um, ocular space by just moving these little guys in and out. Find the patient's red reflex. You're about an arm's length. Brace your pinky on their face. When you find the reflex, come in real close. Remember the silver ring facing the patient. Look at their entire eye, super magnified. Keep the pupil in the center. Slowly pull back, keeping your pinky brace on their face or your uh, uh, ring finger if you want. Um, I just have little hands, so I do the pinky. Um, pull back slowly, keeping the pupil in the center and the retina will come into view nice and big. You'll be able to see a lot of stuff and you'll be able to do something to diagnose pathology that almost nobody else in your hospital can do. This is a very specialized skill. Um, that's what makes you valuable as an ophthalmologist, one of the things at least. Um, so it's very cool to learn, very cool to know. Um, these lenses are not super cheap, but if you're going into ophthalmology, you're definitely going to need them. Uh, and if you aren't in ophthalmology, maybe you can borrow somebody's, um, or at least just get one if you're super interested in it. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was helpful. If you're about to start ophthalmology away rotations or you're starting residency, this might be helpful. Um, or if you just want to know how to use this thing or what it's even for, maybe you found some value in this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD, and I'll see you guys in the next one.